Brown Pocket of Reschool, and tonight we are talking all about a fun plant theme. So I want you to raise your hand or tell me in the comments if you do a plant theme in your classroom or if you do more of a spring theme um, in your classroom or if you do like flowers or garden or farm. Like when do you do plants? Do you do it like alone as its own theme or do you kind of like mix it in all the spring funness. So tell us in the comments when you do or when you learn about plants. Also, I'm also curious too, since everybody is from different places, what month do you learn about plants? I'm always curious because in Missouri, we I usually wait until about end of April till May to do plants. Like I tried to go out and find like a six pack of flowers and there's only herbs out right now. So yeah, so tell us in the comments what month you do plants or you plant pl seeds or you, all the planting things. Tell us in the comments. So, whew, all right, I even got like my little plant, like leafy earrings on for you guys tonight in green. So I was, I'm decked out and I'm ready to go. First things first, up in the top in the comments or in the, the top of this post, there's links to all the things. The most important thing is a freebie for you guys. So um, there is the life cycle of a plant. It's the clip art version you can make it into velcro there's also this plant anchor chart Ta -da! this is um on the blog for you guys um so that link is at the top so make sure um you grab that there's also the life cycle of a plant poster like a simple and a little bit more tricky and then there's also a journal printable for you guys. Um, also, if your stuff is printing wonky, this is just like a random little thing, because I actually did this on accident today. So if your stuff is printing kind of like off, I forgot and I, I downloaded the, or I didn't download it. I literally clicked on the link and then I hit print. So my margins are all wonky. What I didn't do was what you're supposed to do. So if you want it to print all Perfect, all the way to the edge, like, like this. You see the kind of the difference? Um, or, whoops, oh my gosh, here's the other, here's the one that's matching. Um, what you're gonna do is when you click on that link for the freebie, it'll be like in a Google Doc. Um, what you wanna do is download it, close out of the internet, and then open it in Adobe. And Adobe, it's the free version, you don't have to buy it. So this is the wonky one with all the weird edges. This is the one where if you download, close out of the internet and print it, you'll have it print to the edge and all, all awesome. So since I did that on accident today, I thought I would kind of show you guys just kind of like an example. So since you're doing your plant theme, obviously your science center is gonna be plants. So I wanna give you some ideas that you can do in your science center for plants. So obviously you can put these there. So like the life cycle of a plant poster and then you want some, one that's interactive so that they can put it in order. Now this is a free one on my site. If you want one with real photographs, that is in my plant science unit, which looks like this. So you can grab that from my TPT store or you can grab the freebie. You do you, whatever works for you and whatever works for your budget. So, you, you have the life cycle of plant, most important. Just have one of them, doesn't matter which one. Have one of those in your science center, and then you wanna have some plants, you wanna grow some things. So, it's like I said, in Missouri, um, it's a little chilly. So, I printed out a picture of something we did in my classroom um, a couple years ago. So, I like to use these clear cups when we plant, because if the roots grow to the edges, which fingers crossed they do, right? So they can see all the different parts, um, they can see the roots and like um, all the and the, like the water going into the soil, and they can kind of see what's going on, kind of underground. So I love using these little clear cups. They're like I don't know, like in the they're in the you know like the plate paper plate aisle. And then I like to plant different kinds of seeds. So my go-to seeds to plant in the classroom because they have like a short. Um, germination time which means they they sprout quickly um so my favorite are radishes carrots lettuce um lima beans and spinach and 
snap peas. Snap peas take a little bit longer, but they're really, they grow like a vine, so they're really fun to watch. So you can see in here, uh, the kids um, labeled which one we planted four, sorry, five different seeds, and we kind of watched them grow. So you can kind of see, like this is the lima bean. Got the little lima bean sticking out. Here's the lettuce the radishes, and see how the peas, aren't these so much fun? They're kind of up sprouting and kind of going to a vine. They take the longest, but they're so much fun to watch. And then the carrots are kind of short at the bottom. And I like doing carrots because I think kids think that the carrots just automatically grow in like two seconds, and it takes a really long time for the carrots to grow. Like your carrot probably won't grow before school, the end of the school year, which I think is really good to see for kids to like observe that it takes a really long time for that carrot, well, a long time for them, a couple months, for that carrot to grow underneath the soil. It's not automatic. So try growing some plants in your classroom. Now, if you don't want to mess with the dirt, no problem. I got another idea for you. Still do the same seeds, carrots, lettuce, lima beans, snap peas, and spinach. But a lot of this is in the blog post, the spring blog post, because I show you um, another way we planted seeds, which I've also done in milk cartons in my classroom. Once we got rid of the windows, I had to use like a plant, kind of like a mini greenhouse, because I used to have, I had windows in my classroom, and then they added on to my building, and then I got um, windows into the hallway, so then we used a mini greenhouse. So if you don't have windows, that's always an option for you. But if you see right here, you can kind of see it, that's actually a glove. It's a plastic glove. So you can either use like the plastic food service gloves, which are my favorite to use, or you can use like the latex ones. And what you're gonna do is before you plant your seed, you're gonna write a letter on each finger. And this you would have to do in small group. And then you're gonna put a cotton ball and a small one. So this one would be too big. So if you have like those jumbo cotton balls, you're gonna have to kind of pinch them, po poke them off. You're gonna put a different type of seed in each finger, and then you're gonna push a cotton ball down in there, and then spray, 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 and then hang this in the window. So you're gonna hang it, like put a piece of tape, like if this is the, the, the window, you're gonna put a piece of tape and kind of leave this open, because you're gonna have to spray on the inside to water your seeds, and they'll kind of grow up the glove. So that's another fun option. And then you can always do the traditional one. So the wet paper towel, write what it is on the, um, the bag and then put those seeds inside. So you can also too, um, I know some teachers do this, they will staple whatever seed is on the outside. So this bag would be the radishes, another bag would be the carrots, another bag would be spinach, another bag would be lima beans, another bag would be peas, and then, um, Spinach, oh, this one was lettuce, sorry. Lettuce or spinach, they grow about the same. Um, so you can do that too. But you want to try and grow something in your classroom, whether you use a little pot, a paper towel bag, or a glove, just we wanna get something growing so they can actually see the seeds germinate um, and grow and sprout and all the things. So I actually just bought these. So another trick you can do is if you're gonna plant them in dirt, especially with lima beans you're going to want to kind of like soak them overnight if you read a lot of the um the bags of the seeds they want you to soak them overnight a lot a lot of different kinds um i actually liked gardening for a while i don't anymore i don't have the patience <laughs> but for a while i did um but put even if um you're not going to grow seeds at least have your kiddos watch them kind of sprout so they'll do this just with the classroom light um, so put the seeds on a wet paper towel, like really wet, but not, um, not where it's going to like drip out the sides because then it'll mold. Um, oh, you can also do grass seed too. That's also um, another option. I always have bad luck with grass seed. I tried two different years and um, nothing grew. I don't know. It happens. <laughs> so, but it will, um, the water will soak into the seed and then the seeds will start to sprout and they'll see it sprout in the bag. This is also fun to put at the science table. So you can put one in the window and then put one at the science table so they can like see and touch and feel the roots and actually look at them up close and um, fun too. So that's another option. Okay, 
all the things and all the seeds. And then you can also get a real plant. Like I said, I'm in Missouri. Um, and it, it's like nothing is, it's cold still. <laughs> so what you can do is once you get like this, once the six pack are in um, by your store. Also too, just a warning with plants. There's a lot of plants that are poisonous um, for little ones to ingest. You don't think they're going to eat them, but they could. Um, like lilac, for example, or lavender I was going to get for today. But I was like, that's a bad example because I looked it up and it's, um, it can cause vomiting if ingested. So even some herbs, if they're ingested, they could cause tummy troubles and things. So make sure you're always checking any plant you're having in your classroom. So what you're going to do, I love to do this with a six pack of seeds. Um, I'll post a picture in the comments after we're done. But I love pulling it out and giving each kid one or each pair one and kind of letting them dissect the plant. And then you're gonna plant them afterwards. But let them take out the plant and let them touch the roots, let them feel them, kind of push some of the dirt away, let them notice how it's kind of connected. Um, I like, again, using the six pack because you can see all the parts of the plant. You can see the root, the stem, the leaf, and the flower, and then you can see what's inside the flower. Um, so this is really fun to do with the six pack of plants. And then you can also send them home as an end of the year gift or a parent gift too. Um, I actually, this one's mint, so that one's really fun. Um, so I can smell it, which is probably why my allergies are starting to go a little, a little haywire right now. But look at this, you guys. You, when you take these out, and you guys do this for small group or um, or like a um, science experiment. Again, just let them touch the roots because um, they unless they've planted with their their family, they may have never seen roots up close um, or been able to touch them. Or even maybe they've seen them, but they didn't notice what that's what it was in the dirt. So again, just let them little good little little fingers touch all the little parts and then this is what it was really fun to do you can kind of do like a little labeling so these are in my parts of a um in my science plant pack so they can label them i just put some toothpicks on them and then they can label the different parts so um they can just kind of label them and it's so much fun and they don't have to stick them through they kind of just point to them. There is flower in here, even though my, my plant I have, an, as an example, doesn't have the flower, but that's okay. It's in there as an option. Um, and then we got all the different parts. And again, I just put it on a toothpick. So just super simple. And they can say, oh my gosh, this one does, mine doesn't have a flower, because you will get six pack of plants. Um, and some of them don't have flowers yet, because the, the, um, the buds haven't bloomed yet. Um, so that's just a fun kind of talking point. Um, so yeah, so um, kind of dissect a plant for your science. Okay, I'm gonna move all of this, don't worry. I'm actually, I, I planted the mint because I actually wanna, um, I want it like to grow it in my house. So I, don't worry, I won't, I won't kill this plant. <laughs> it will go to good use. So that is one idea. And again, I've done all the different ways in the classroom. I've done it in milk, planted stuff in milk cartons, and you do what works for you that year. Like some years, you're gonna be able to be like, yes, I'm ready, and I wanna plant all the things. Some years, you're gonna be overwhelmed, and or maybe your class is a hot mess, or you have behaviors going on, and you're not able to. So do what you can for your classroom that year. Um, another fun thing to do is, and this is an egg tray, um, grab, I, um, I always go to the dollar store and I grab like all the different seed packs. Um, and then I just dump them in. Okay. These I cheated. <laughs> these, a lot of these are like beans and corn, but that's okay. Um, or if you have like leftover ones from the seeds you planted, you can show the kids like what you're actually putting in there. Um, some of the seeds are so little, they're not going to be able to pick up but it's fun to see for the kids to notice and see what the different seeds look like. Um, and you can have two, I don't have one with me, but what you can do, these are my seeds from the other year. Oh, and I typically, sometimes your seeds will keep for um, a year or two, so just an FYI. You can put the um, put this and then put it in a baggie and tape it close and leave some seeds loose on the inside so they can see and they can identify which seed goes with this or you can put them in like a little canister and cut out 
with the picture of what it is on the top and put it on the top and then they can kind of um, um, classify the seats. That's the word I was looking for. So what they can do, I like having the little egg sorters because they can sort the different seeds. Like these are some sunflower seeds. Here's a pea. Um, yep, I totally grab stuff from my sensory table. So you can tell. It's fine. <laughs> they're, it's all seeds though, so it's no big deal. And I got some black beans and they're going to go, oh my gosh, Miss Jackie, I can't, I can't pick up some of these seeds. And they'll go, oh my gosh, that's that's okay, like you can just pick up what you can and maybe if the seeds that are too small, they can just stay in the middle. But it's fun for them um, to notice because them not being able to pick up the seed, um, they're noticing how small it is, noticing the texture, um, like they can notice like the seed coat is coming off. Um, but these little egg trays, super cheap way, again, Dollar Tree um, around Easter time um, or in the spring, I think it's for like deviled eggs. Um, but yeah, super fun. And then you can put like a little, this is the seed sort, um, little header from the um, science pack. But if you don't have the science pack, no worries. Write it on a sentence strip. No worries. And just a little like tape it to the tray and you're good to go. This sorting tray from the Dollar Tree also works. Either one works. Again, just grab a sorting tray and sort away. Okay. Those are some ideas. Now, if you want to go to town for your science center, grab my scientist all about plants unit. I think it's like literally one of your guys's um, the teachers. It's everyone's like favorite. It's like the one of the top selling science units. Like look at all the different things you can do. And there's tons of real photos, um, all the activities, like there's Whole group, small group, um, different setups. This one's talking about the um, vegetables, if they're above ground, below ground, all the things. So the, again, if you want even more for your science center um, with real photos, grab my All About Plants science unit. Okay, for dramatic play, before I forget, I'm not gonna go anywhere because I'm surrounded um, and I don't have my dramatic play set up, but there's two things that I like to do for plants for dramatic play. So I either like to do farm, so, if you wanna do farm, hop over to my blog, search farm, click on this image, and I go through step-by-step step how you can create a farm in your dramatic play center. And you can make it as detailed like I do, or you can make it much simpler. You do you, do what works for you. Or you can do a garden shop. This one's really fun. Um, and if your kids are really into flowers, or if you need to work on color sorting or colors, this one is for you. So again, Hop over to my blog, search garden shop, and click on this post, and I will go step by step with you how you can change your dramatic play center into a garden shop for your plant unit. So you can do farm or garden shop. Either one works, um, and your kids will have a blast, and they will learn a ton because I also tell you tons and tons of ways to sneak in lots of math and lots of literacy into their play, they won't even know they're learning. We're gonna be so, 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 so tricky. Okay, so let's talk um, some sensory really quick. So here is a sensory table idea that I have for you. So you can use black beans. So much fun. And then, again, we always put things in our sensory table with a purpose. We're very intentional. So put in some garden tools mini little hands like mini tools so if you have little mini garden tools hop to the dollar tree they usually have some these i found in the target dollar spot a couple years ago um little tools and then i have three different size pots you can tell this one i kept one year from when i was um i i, I wash out my pots when i um plant things in my house um so yeah or you can buy them but i just wash them out then they're free. <laughs> well, not free, but I'm buying the plant anyways. So get three different size plants. So now they can sort by size. And then what I did was I put in three different color flowers. So I got big blue flowers. And then for red, I literally just cut the stem shorter. And then I found some smaller yellow flowers, which those are, these are the ones that are like all off the branches. So that's why they're smaller. 
And again, all this is from the Dollar Tree. And then I have seeds, which I wanted to do some color sorting. So again, I just did the three colors so that way they can sort by color. And then I put some little bees in there because bees pollinate the flowers so they can make new seeds. But as they're playing, they can act out the life cycle of a plant so they can plant the seed and cover it up with dirt and then they can watch it grow and then they can have the bees pollinate the plants and they can also sort by size and just play and have a blast but again we are putting things in our sensory table with a purpose if you don't have a big sensory table or maybe you only have two sizes that's okay two sizes are better than everything the same size and again all of this is like target dollar spot or um the, the dollar tree and if you can't find little um little bees um check usually like the floral section sometimes has those like little like fabricy ones um those work too or check your like bug counters sometimes there's bumblebees in there so that is a really fun sensory filler now you can also use um i have another idea on my blog um with rubber mulch you guys i keep my fillers year after year um, so you want to know why we had rubber mulch? <laughs> so one year when my kids got the, got a playground, um, we used rubber mulch for their playground. Um, so we wouldn't have to redo the mulch every year. So here is the rubber mulch. So if you don't want to use black beans, you can use rubber mulch. I do always say use planting soil with caution because nine out of 10 times there is fertilizer in them. So chemicals, which you know, do not need to be right next to a kiddo. And I mean, kids do eat things that we do when we aren't looking or when we are looking. So make sure if you are using pot, using dirt, there are no fertilizers, no chemicals in them. And then um, I did have a friend um, find a nail in the potting soil that was a Dollar Tree. So make sure if you're putting soil in, you're also going through and making sure there's no, no, no debris or anything pointy that come, could hurt them. Because safety first. <laughs> okay. And I have a fun sensory that I'm going to show you last because it's messy and I won't be able to do anything else after that. So I will show you that one at the end. It's um, it's something with worms. <laughs> so some ideas. Oh, let's do art. Let's do art next. So for art, I know a lot of us love doing still life art. Still life art is when they look at something that's alive or should be alive, like an animal. Like you, they can look at an animal figure and then draw it. Um, they can, you can put a vase. This isn't really water, it's just gems. Um, but it's a vase. I actually use these for when um, I do, um, I can put these at my table when I have um, like parent-teacher conferences and stuff. Oh, or um, I also have one of these from Omelomi. It's plastic, it's from Dollar Tree. Um, so what you do is you put out just a different color, all the different color paints, and all they're going to do is look at it and try to paint it. My little guy did this one. Um, so yeah, so they look at the, look at it and say, okay, what do you see first? Oh my gosh, you see a vase. Can you draw the vase? Do you notice anything in the vase? Oh, there's water. They can draw the water and the green stems and the green leaves. And then I like to put in things with different kind of shapes. So you can see how these, um, like these have a little bit pointy petals. These have round ones. These have kind of very small, um, little itty bitty um, purple flowers. Now, are they gonna be able to put all of that in their painting? No, but I do want to have different textures and shapes just so they can look and observe and notice. So, all kinds of fun things for still life. Now you can also, if you have like real um, plants, or maybe you got some flowers, um, bring them in. Um, and, and you can always use real real flowers. I just didn't have any. Um, so fake ones, they work too. And these are all, again, all Dollar Tree. Now, I know this is like a, a tried and true classic, but every time I think everyone knows something, there's always a couple teachers out there like, oh my gosh, I didn't think of that. So what you could also do is stamp with flowers. So like you, instead of having the paint in a cup, you would have it on a plate and they would stamp it in the in the paint and then they would stamp 
and then the flowers. I like to keep a little stem on them so that way they have something to hold on to. And you can use fake or real flowers. Again, these, I when I paint with flowers, I typically use the flowers from the block center or from activities that look tired and they're like worn out, like they're um, like ready to be pitched. So if I'm gonna pitch them anyways, we might as well paint with them. So again, just put like a, a, like a paper plate, squirt some colors in it, put all of the flowers in it. And then, oops, not that one. It doesn't have a stem on it. And then they can stamp all the little paints. You can also do this and have like a, like cover the table table and paint and put different um, plates or like little bowls of paint. And then you can do it as a collaborative painting. And then what I like to do when I do collaborative paintings is once it's dry, I cut it up into 18 or however many kids you have and then give each kid a piece to take home because it's a collaborative painting. So they each get a piece to take home. Now, one thing I also wanted to, um, I almost lost it. Okay, so these, so I, ha I have a wreath from like Christmas time and it has all of these on it. And I just cut them off and I use them for different things. So you can also stamp with like little needles and leaves. But look, hold on, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold it up and I want you to like listen. Isn't it a fun sound? And then look at, look at this texture, you guys. Like how, how cool is that? So you can also paint <laughs> or stamp with um, little, little tree branches too. I know some of you guys do a tree theme, um, but yeah, so they can paint with that. Or again, all of the different flowers. And then I have one more art activity because I thought of it and I, I couldn't not tell you. So this is one um, that I like to do with my kiddos. So what I do is I tear a whole bunch of long strips up and I cut some tissue paper. Not, not pretty. <laughs> it's just cut up in squares. And then what they do is they take these because I teach three, four and five year olds and tearing this long strip would be very, very tricky for them. So in order for them not to be frustrated, I pre-tear all of the strips and then what they do is they tear them in half or in half again and they make the stems and then in order to make the leaves they have to tear it more so they're not tearing the whole strip but they are tearing to make the little leaves which would be like this part um, and then they can tear them in half because this won't fit they have to tear them in half to make their stems. And then for the flowers, they just crumble it up and they can put it on the top. So, some really great fine motor, but then it's totally abstract art or um, open-ended art at the same time. And if they wanna turn it this way, they totally can. If they wanna put more on top, they can. If they wanna put the flowers all over, they can. It's what, however they wanna make it um, because it's their, it's their work, it's their project. But again, if you have kindergarten, you could probably have the green paper out, but I teach three, four, and five-year-olds. Tearing these green strips would be way too challenging, so I put these out pre-torn, and then they have to tear them up more. So I am getting some fine motor work in, and they are making it their own, but in a way that is not frustrating for them. So it's a really, really fun garden with torn paper. Or they could also, if, they, if your kiddos really love to paint, they could also paint the stems and then use the tissue paper for the flowers. So do whatever your class likes that year. Or yeah, that year. Because every year your kids are gonna like different things and that's okay. That's what makes teaching fun, I think. Different classes like different things. So let's talk about manipulatives. So this is literally out of my closet and you can tell it's out of my closet because <laughs> some of them don't have flowers on them. So. What I do love to do with stuff from the Dollar Tree is I like to take it all apart. But how fun would this be if you took 
all of these off, you'd probably have what, like 50 maybe? You could have like 50 little flower manipulatives just off these little, off this little branch and you could have some leaves too. Like these would be really fun manipulatives for a counting game. Um, this is, I, this I again had it in my closet because I've already, I've already done this. <laughs> like I just tear off all the pink parts and then you have all of these pink little leaves that you would really, if you bought these in like a baggie, you would be paying a lot for them. But this whole thing was like a dollar. And then you just literally, you just tear them off. And look at all of them I got. And these would be so much fun to count with or put in the sensory table or put in a water table. There's just so many ways you could use, um, use these in the classroom. So just a really cheap, fun idea because I couldn't really, um, there aren't really like flower counters, but these would be really fun flower counters. And you could get some that would be blue and all different colors. These I just had in my closet. So fun, fun counters for you guys. Okay, we're just gonna keep rolling. So here's some other fun counter ideas. So you could use beads, pom-poms, black beads, beans for our seeds. Um, bee mini erasers. I love using lima beans because they're bigger. Um, and then look, you can put letters on them. And you can also paint them too if you wanted. But yeah, but you could put letters on them and then you could have a letter set of lima beans. You can also make the lima beans into bean rulers, which I will put a link to the blog post for that. Basically, you just put these in tape and then you have like a non-standard ruler. Um, for um, measuring. And then if you have any flower mini erasers, those work too. But it's hard to find mini erasers, so these little flowers would be just as fun and if not, even more fun. So those are some ideas for counters. And then my favorite thing are these worms. They're not real. They're like the fishing worms at like the Walmart um, fishing section. Now, make sure there are no hooks. Um, some of them come with like weird tails. Oh, like this one. And I just cut it off because <laughs> worms don't have weird tails like this. So, but they're, they're not slimy, but they're squishy and slick, I guess is a good way to put them. Um, but they have all different ones. And I have a fun sensory thing we're going to do at the very end with these. But I have to do it at the end because I'm going to make a mess and then I won't be able to do anything else. So, <laughs> I won't be able to show you any more activities. All right, so let's talk Play-Doh trays. So you guys know I love Play-Doh trays. I have them for every theme. Again, I bought, I got like a, like one of these, but with tulips, pulled them all off, found some leaves, flower cookie cutters, some beans for the seeds. I think these are from the Dollar Tree. And then I got, the, I keep these when I buy plants and then they can stick these in. And they, now we have a really fun, um, flower or garden um, Play-Doh tray and they're talking about the parts of the plant so they have the flower and the leaf you could also put green pipe cleaners in here for the stems um, and then these are the seeds so kind of life cycle kind of um, parts of a plant and um, sneaking in some environmental print as well so tons of fun and so much fun fine motor now this is um, these. This tray is from Lakeshore. Um, the Dollar Tree used to have them a lot. I haven't seen them lately, but I'm sure they'll bring them back as spring is coming. Or fingers crossed, hopefully they will. And I actually keep this out, and it's in my art center. I have a special spot on the top of my on my art shelf for Play-Doh trays because we have one all year long that are um they're for all different things. Now, if you have my new plants math and literacy unit. There are plant Play-Doh cards. So fun. And then there's also, um, I wanted to sneak in some science. So there's some fun science-y Play-Doh mats as well. So the, um, all the printables I'm going to show you, which um, I'm not going to show you everything, just some of them. Plus I have some more fun activities too that don't involve printables. Um, the, all the math and literacy printables will be in my math and literacy plant centers pack. <laughs> so that way, 
If you wanted to get two things, you could get the Plant Science Center and the Plant Math and Literacy Centers. So, fun, fun, fun. Okay, so that's that. Let's do math first. So, this is so much fun. So this is a pool noodle and I cut it in half and then I cut a slit down the middle. And then I took these number cards. Now, if you don't have my number cards, here's what you can do. You can take these flowers example but you could take like these flowers and put one leaf on there and write a number on there um, or put like a, a piece of tape and you could number them number the fake flowers that way so that way you could use fake flowers and look or if you have little guys they can just plant their flowers now this is the printable obviously they're putting these in like number order I just have these on popsicle sticks that I cut in half not fancy um, but you could um, make your own number cards. You could use the ones that I have. Or they can just, you can also just um, stick it in too. Like it sticks, like it's not hard to stick in. I just wanted to do, um, I did a slit down the middle. That way, because um, these are flat. So if you're using popsicle sticks, cut um, a spot. That way they're easy to go in. But if you want to, like let's say you have two year olds, you can totally just have them um, plant their flowers in their pool noodle. I know a lot of people um, do like that green foam with it, but I found that that kind of gets um, flaky and it kind of makes um, a hot mess. <laughs> so use the pool noodle, less of a mess and cheaper and they, um, it's, in, it's in like a nice little line too. So it's a win-win. Oh, and then this also comes with a printable so they can number do the number order they can trace the numbers or they can fill it in and it also has numbers up to 50 and up to um 100 so different levels for different learners you can use this again toddler activity preschool pre-k and then we got the counting to 50 and 100 for kinders so different levels for the same activity. This one is so fun, you guys. Okay, so I took the flower and I pulled it off and then I glued a pipe cleaner and I pushed it back in. And then look, you guys, they can sort the flowers by, um, or sort the bean, beads, beads by color and they can put them on, oh, I don't have red beads, that's okay. <laughs> so make sure you have the right color beads out, but that's okay. Um, and then put the beads on the pipe cleaner and now they are sorting by color. And isn't this so much fun? Like how engaging is this hand-eye coordination slash fine motor slash math color sorting activity? Oh my gosh. And you guys, I, oh, I cut the pipe cleaners in half too. So, so simple, so easy. And, um, I just added the hot glue cause I think the kids would have pulled them out. So, but, oh my gosh. So fun. And again, all of these are from the Dollar Tree. So just go to the Dollar Tree, buy like a bunch of flowers in each color, and then um, you can use them for, you can use the flowers for all the activities. Oh, here's the, the second half. I thought this would have been too long, so I cut it. So yeah. So a fun color sorting activity. And then if you want to sneak in more math in my centers pack, we have these little flowers. You just tape a pipe cleaner to the back and they have to count and put that many on, beads on. Or um, for my kinder or smart, um, uh, my um, advanced pre-K friends, you can put a math problem at the top or an addition equation and they can do three plus two and add, um, practice their addition facts or informal addition with the little flowers. And again, I just taped them to the back. Of a pipe cleaner so fun game so many ways this would be really fun for like a morning activity to kind of get their fingers warmed up and work in so much fun. oh okay oh I, I have these sunflower seeds right here so buy a pack of like original sunflower seeds 
Um, if you want to use sunflower seeds as counters, because you can get this big thing for like, these were two for a dollar at the store. <laughs> and um, a package of sunflower seeds is like a dollar. So buy the ones you're supposed to eat and just kind of like wipe them off with paper towel I'm gonna get the salt off <laughs> or a little bit of the salt off. And then you have a whole bunch of um, sunflower seed counters for lots cheaper. Just random thought. It fell off my counter trip. All right, so for measuring, take my flowers back. You, they can either measure, I've done a couple things during a plant theme. So I've bought real vegetables at like carrots and lettuce and celery, and we've measured those with either a rainbow ruler or a bean ruler. A rainbow ruler, I did a Facebook Live on this last week. It's a ruler, I just colored each inch. So now when they measure, they're just gonna count the color blocks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And it is seven big. Or they can use the bean ruler and they can measure how big. Again, they're just using a fun way to do non-standard measurement because if you've ever tried to measure with beans individually, they kind of go all over the place and it's kind of frustrating, especially if they have a weak um, fine motor or somebody bumps the table and all the beans scatter. So tape them all together and make your bean ruler and they can measure flowers. These are just some cut flowers that I had from Dollar Tree stuff. Um, or they can measure leaves. These are just some leaves I have from the different flowers that I chop up from the Dollar Tree. Um, and again, you can also measure vegetables because vegetables are part of a plant. They're either like the root or the flower or whatever part they are, um, or the, um, the leaf. Um, they can measure that. Or you could also measure your pretend vegetables from like your pretend kitchen or pretend dramatic play center. So, so many, so many options to measure. If you want a principle to measure, this is the principle in my plants center. So you, they can measure flowers. They, oops, what's that? They can measure carrots. They can measure trees. They can measure flowers, corn stalks, or radishes. And then it also comes with a worksheet. And again, all the math and literacy printables are in my math and literacy printables center pack. But you pick how you wanna do the activity and do, again, do what works for you and your classroom and your kids. This is a fun one. So this is a worm counting mat. These are in my center pack. So if you don't want to laminate and you still want a half page, you can always cut the page protectors in half. You lose half of it, but it's a really quick and easy way to laminate. Because um, sometimes for pictures, I don't laminate things because it makes a glare. And then I laminate it when I'm done. But I didn't have time to laminate these yet. So what they're going to do, I need a dry ice burger. They're going to read it. So this one would be here. I'll do nine because that one's easier. So nine and they can trace it. Now if they don't recognize the number, no worries. They can count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Or they can check to make sure they have the number right. And then they can use the tweezers to put the worms on. And these are just little pipe cleaners that I wiggled <laughs> to make the little worms. Or you can cut up the worms from Walmart. So you can use either one and they can put the worms on their number mats. And then look, it erases just like um, lamination would. So if you're ever in a pinch, like I was tonight before Facebook Live, um, you can put these in page protectors. You can also put, the, um, put them in, you know, like next to each other and that's totally fine too. Yeah, but a really, really fun way for them to practice writing their numbers, practice counting, and fine motor and counting out objects because counting out objects is a different skill than counting how many are on um, on the page or on, somewhere, like stationary objects. So counting out and counting stationary objects, two different goals, um, two different skills. So, and then I also, the number also has the same amount but sometimes, especially for little learners, they that's a lot for them, for their eyes to kind of track and see which ones they've counted and which ones they haven't. So that's why it's also in the temp frame because some learners, they can't track and um, 
and keep track of which ones they've counted and which ones they haven't because they're not in a straight line. So that's why they're also in the 10 frame for them as well. So if they're not able to count the worms on here, they can count the worms on here because this, that's a really, really tricky skill, especially for like a three-year-old or a four-year-old or even a five-year-old to do when they're all kind of jumbled up and they're not in a line. It's really hard for them to, for some, for some friends to track because their eyes just don't have, they're not strong enough yet for them to, um, to do that. So fun little, fun little note. So let's talk about some literacy. I'm going to squeeze a couple in and all, again, all these printables, the centers, um, the ones I showed you first, the science ones are in my science math and lit my science plant pack. And then the centers, um, like the math and the literacy ones I'm going to show you, are in the plant literacy centers. And I'll put the links at the bottom when we're done. So a fun name craft you could do. How cute is this? So what they're going to do is they are going to take this strip of paper. They're just going to cut some strips. And they're just going to cut some grass. And then they are gonna cut some stems. And they're gonna have to count how many letters are in the name because that's how many stems they need. And then they need to cut out their tulips. Now, if this is too hard for them to cut, you can cut it for them, no worries. Now, if you want them to um, try it, they can do it. you can do a couple things. And I do a kind of variety of all of this. So some of my friends that like are three and they're not ready to cut this, they're just going to be cutting this because the amount of time it takes them to cut this is going to be the same amount of time a pre-K friend cuts this, this, and a couple of these. So it'll all work out because they're all doing the same activity, just at their own unique level. And I would do this for small group, not full group, obviously. Um, so they can cut this out. They can use regular scissors. Again, they can put tape, put tape on it and tape to the top so they remember to cut with their thumb up. Um, they can also use bounce back scissors which bounce back open, making it easier to cut. They can start with these when their hand gets tired, move to these if they want, or they can start with these and use these the whole time. Or like, let's say they cut out one and they're like, oh my God, Miss Jackie, like they just cut out this, this, and then they cut out one of these and they're like, my hand is so tired. I'm like, you know what? No worries. Uh, how many do you need? And I will have some of these pre-cut next to me so I can give them out as needed because I don't want anybody frustrated. Um, it's not worth this cute craft. No, like we just want them cutting and practicing making those muscles strong. And when their muscles fade out, they're done. So have some of these cut out ready to go for those friends. So that's a fun activity. This is in the plant math and literacy centers pack. Another fun idea. This is um, again in my center pack. So this is a compound word puzzle. All I did was I took envelopes and I put the puzzle on there. So this is butterfly, so butterfly, and they have to stick them in. So how much fun is that, you guys? Oh, another idea I have for this, this is not this, but what you can do is take an envelope. You can also write a letter or a number on it. I'm gonna use these as my example. So you can have a whole bunch of lima beans and then you can have seed packets with the letter on them and they can put the seeds in the seed envelope. So A, we're going A and then you would have a whole bunch out for obviously the other letters and again, just write on regular old lima beans, and then you have a fun letter game. So you can either do the principal letter game, or you can make your own, or you can put out both in your classroom. You could also do this with numbers, put a number on it, and then they have to put that many seeds in the envelope. And if you can't use um, real seeds in your classroom, use pom-poms. So another fun idea for you guys. These are just some letter formation cards in, in that Math and Literacy Center's pack. So they can trace it with a dry erase marker and then erase when they're done. Or they can use the beans and put the beans on there. 
maybe to make just one letter and then trace the other ones. They could also use Play-Doh to make the letters. Again, just trying to make handwriting fun and not um, the same over and over and over and over. All right, you guys are gonna love this one. So, you know I put, oh gosh. Um, okay, so this, is, this was my learning curve. This is why I hot glued the other flowers on. So, how, here we go. how much fun is this, you guys? So, take some pipe cleaners and put them on some flowers, and then your students, and you could do this with name cards too, like they could make their name. So, these are the vocabulary or the word cards from the plant centers unit. So, they can pick a card, and I, my cards come in upper, lowercase or uppercase. So you pick what you want to do, what, which ones you want to use, and then they have to put make the word on the flower. You could also do this with sight words, and again, you could do it with student names. These beads are from Lakeshore, but you could use any letter beads you have in your classroom. But how much fun would it be to, again, this is why I hot glued. That's why I hot glued these on, because I saw when I was doing this activity that, that it kept popping off. So they can make words, again, they can do Vocabulary words like related to the theme. They can do names. You could do sight words. You can just, they can just string the letter B's on there without the word cards if they're younger. So again, so many ways to do this game, this activity um, at so many levels and it's so fun. So these cute beads are from Lakeshore. I love these, I actually bought these with my own money. They did not send them to me. I love these, I love them that much. Um, they also have number beads in them, but again, if you don't have these, you can use any um, letter beads you have in your classroom. So that is another um, another fun one. And then the last printable I'm gonna show you and then be ready for the fun sensory thing. So this one's so much fun. So they are flower syllables. So your flowers are all gonna start off empty. And then the students have to count out the syllables in the word. I did these for you so you could see them. So they would say, okay, <laughs> water, watermelon, watermelon, and they put it on the floor. And then they would go, tree, tree. <laughs> and they would put them all on the flowers until they made all of the flower syllables. So much fun. Okay, so what I have, we are going to make oobleck. But we're gonna make dirt oobleck, but with worms. Because plants need new, need nutrients from the dirt. So I wanna make my oobleck brown. So I have some liquid watercolor. I'm gonna make my water brown. I don't have a stir stick, of course. We're gonna use these tweezers <laughs> to make it brown. So oobleck is cornstarch and water. I don't have a spoon either, so we're gonna use my tweezers. So, that's not brown enough. Let's put a little bit more on it. Again, just liquid watercolor. This is my favorite brand. It's from Discount School Supply. And we're gonna use the tweezers <laughs> to mix it up. So, now, so Ooblick is basically a liquid that kind of turns into a solid. Uh, and you, I just always eyeball it. Again, um, have the kids make this with you. It's so much fun. When they put it in their hands, it's, it's the one that melts. When it gets warm, you're gonna wanna make it into that goopy. <laughs> I would use a spoon, not tweezers to mix it. But this is so much fun. And liquid watercolor, it won't stain your hands. So. <laughs> and if you have too much liquid, no worries. Just put in cord stirred. And just do, keep mixing up until you get that good consistency that you want. And then to make it even more do you see how it kind of like melts in my hand? And then it's kind of like, um, it's 
kind of like, kind of a salad, but then it turns into a liquid. Oh my gosh. So now, I mean, what lives in the dirt to aerate the soil to make room for the roots to grow? The worms, oh my gosh. So we have some worms and some oobleck. You could put some bugs in here as well. You could put in some little pom-poms for like seeds or dirt. Obviously don't put the tweezers in there, <laughs> but oh my gosh, you guys. Your kids will love this. They will, again, it's science because the, um, you mix two things together and the properties are changing. It goes from a solid to a liquid and it's so much fun and again just liquid watercoloring from discount school supply that's just my favorite brand there's other brands um, you can use and these worms are just from walmart now that see why i had to show you this last because there's no way i could show you other activities because i now have ublick all over. Um, the worms, somebody's asking where are these worms from? So they're from the fishing section at, um, see sometimes I'm not the best at making a blick. So you just add more. Um, oh my gosh, you guys. Can you hear it? Drip, drip, drip. They're fishing worms and you just obviously make sure they're, that they're the ones that don't have the hooks in them. And then if they have little tails, just cut the weird little tails off. So, so much fun. So, I hope you guys had a blast um, and got some really great plant ideas for your plant theme or if you do it during spring or whenever you do um, plants or you grow seeds. Um, all of the science things I showed you are from my science plant unit. All the math and literacy printables are from my plant math and literacy centers unit. And the freebie, which is what I showed you at the very beginning, that link is at the very top. So make sure you grab that. And I hope you guys have an amazing rest of the week. Oh, and I have a plant, plant book list too at the top of this post too. And the bird book list and like chick and duck book lists are live on my blog too. So now I added um, some more book lists. So if you need book lists, they are there on the blog. There's like a ton of them. I think I have like over 50 book lists now. So, and then I also have a book list with like the ultimate books that you have to have or like the must have books for a preschool classroom. So have a great rest of the week.